Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And today we're going on a mini road trip into the Colorado mountains for a full day of driving and exploring. Let's Yay. get started. <laughs> We can see the mountains in the distance and it looks really beautiful. It's kind of crazy because the route that we're taking right now is actually the route that we used to take every single day to go to work and we haven't done that in over a year now. Yeah. I have to say I kind of prefer taking this route just for fun than every day in traffic. So how's it feeling in the Maki so far? Just because the car is so new it still feels like a new route to me and we haven't been in a year so. It really feels new. Yeah, it's odd. It's something so familiar that's so different just from time and vehicle. I feel pretty comfortable as a passenger though. I've been playing with the radio a whole bunch and it's kind of interesting. Somewhat intuitive and somewhat, somewhat not, but I like it so far. So we left the house with 93% charge and 229 miles of range. Our first stop is going to be in Fairplay, Colorado, and that's about 85 miles from our house. So we'll check in there and do the math and see like how accurate the range estimate is uh, being. But right now we are, as you can sort of probably tell, we are climbing, going up through the first sort of uh, bit of mountains that we hit just west of Denver. and. Our efficiency is showing. We are at 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour right now. We're doing uh, about 50 miles an hour. Uh, the speed limit to three here uh, dropped from 65 to 60 to 45. So a good deal of climbing. This is sort of to be expected. Like as you climb, you will lose a lot of efficiency and then when we get on the other side we'll, we'll gain a lot of efficiency so a very short uh, segment of driving right now we're only 20 miles into our drive and as we get further in we will get a better idea of how our range is going to be for the entire day if you hear the dinging it's because I'm using intelligent cruise control and these roads are pretty darn curvy and it's not surprising that it loses it on some of these sharper curves, but it's not it's not canceling as in like slamming on the brakes and disengaging. It's just sort of let me know that it that the road is curving too much for it to stay within the lane centering parameters. So not to be uh, it's not unexpected that it would do that, uh, but I am sort of like testing. I think a, a more extreme case for lane centering. Uh, intelligent cruise control. So the temperature is currently 42 degrees. As we climb into the mountains, you can definitely feel the temperature dropping a bit. We had, I, I at least had my seat warmer on just on a low setting. And then I have noticed a little bit of cold closer to the windows. And we did have e-heat on for a little bit accidentally. I was pressing a lot of buttons and I turned it off. And so I think we are turning it on now. We're gonna see how that feels. Like it's it's definitely not cold. It's just noticing a little bit of chill. How about you? Yeah, just a little bit chilly. And of course the e-heat will affect the range more than not using e-heat. Um, but you can set the cabin temperature. We have it set for 68. That's what we usually keep our house. So if felt like it was having trouble keeping up without the heat so we're just going to turn it on um, you know range if you are concerned about that you can always keep that off and just rely on the seat heaters and the steering wheel warmer but um, you know we want to just be comfortable and enjoy the ride we're at 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour which is pretty darn low mm -hmm. but of course if you don't know Denver is the mile high city which is 5,280 feet but we're climbing west of that. I think we're going up probably to about uh, seven or 8,000 feet for this section. Um, I'm not very familiar with this part of the route. Um, eventually, like we will climb up and over the Continental Divide. So we have a lot of climbing, expect a lot of bad efficiency today. So this is like a really good test on the car and just seeing how efficiency uh, 
goes throughout the day. Now that I've gotten through the worst part of the curves going through the mountain, uh, the first mountain that we're going through, the intelligent cruise control is doing a much better job of staying within the lane and doing the lane centering. Uh, this is almost back to freeway speeds. I think the speed limit is now 55. Yep. So it's it's doing good. It also was really nice that it adjusted the speed limit, of course, uh, based off of the speed signs and the map. So it's reading those and knowing where we're at on the map and adjusting the speeds accordingly. So uh, a lot of times I've found that as I'm going through some of these mountain passes, uh, the speed limit will change and I won't notice until I notice traffic has slowed down significantly around me because I'm focused on driving. So the car is watching out, but it's also helping steer through all of these. Yeah, that's it. So we're in fair play and we're going to stop at a charging station. We don't really need to, but just want to show you, we're pretty far out in the middle of nowhere and they have a charging station out here. It's a charge point station, so it's not gonna be super fast, but uh, we, don't, we don't need it and it would be adequate like if you were out here on an adventure out in the, the wilderness. <laughs> A beautiful view. Yeah. So we're out here in the middle of nowhere. Let's give it a try to give this a charge. This is interesting. It's a charge point connector, but this is in coordination with the state of Colorado to uh, set up these charging stations in a lot of the different areas in the far reaching areas of Colorado. So Colorado is doing, being very proactive in getting these type of charging stations throughout the state. So it's uh, a 62.5 kilowatt charger. So it's not the, the fastest, but that's pretty good for us. And it will be 20 cents per kilowatt hour. It says, I can't see that. It says, uh, it's really hard to see. 25 cents for parking, I'm not sure I think it's uh, if you're not charging, it'll charge you 25 cents, but we'll see. We'll plug in and charge and see how it goes. I think we're good to go. Flip down to fast charging port. Authorizing, waiting for EV. Charging, it's at 53%. I'm going to hop in the car real quick because I want to see what the range estimate and how that coordinated with uh, what we actually got. So we were at 53% and 117 miles. We're charging right now, so we're at 54% and 120 miles already. But if you recall, we left at 93% with 229 miles of range. So even though we only did 85 miles, we lost about 100 miles of range, and that's because we went from 5,000 feet up to uh, 10,000 feet. So that's the reason for that. And if you look at our trip for today so far, we did 83.4 miles, 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour so far. Took us about an hour and a half to get here. As I said earlier, we turned off e-heat for a while, turned it back on, but we still only had 4% climate use. It's currently 36 degrees, so that sort of shows you how efficient the heating system is as well as how well insulated the car is. And uh, external temperature, only 3%. And I think that's because when we started in Colorado, we came from a warm garage and started driving immediately. It didn't have to do a lot of heating of the battery because we preconditioned the, the cabin. So even though it was a little bit cool outside, I don't think that was uh, too much loss for external temperature. So let's go watch the charge. We won't charge too much. We're only going to, uh, our next stop will be Breckenridge and then Frisco, and we can do a fast charging stop there just to try out the EA station. But so far this charging station is uh, great and with no issues. And it has a pretty darn good view. So there's the charging station and there's the view of one of Colorado's famous mountains. So this is a 62.5 kilowatt charger. 
we're getting 56.5 going into the car. We've already added about 12 miles of range, 13 miles of range. And right now it's a $1.92, $1.94. And the battery percentage is 57%. As I said, we don't really need to charge here, but um, this is a nice test of a remote charging station here in Colorado. So we're at 60%, added at about 22 miles. Breaker Ridge is actually only 23, so anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug. We're gonna go find maybe some coffee and a bathroom and keep going. That cost a total of $3.34 for that charging session. And we got 6.9 kilowatt hours, almost seven. So we parked EV over here on Main Street Fair Play and we happened across a really adorable little scene that we obviously have to somehow get a photo in. Right? Right. Yeah. I don't know what you said, but right. Right. Hey Patrick. Thank you. Hi, we found a really lovely spot. It's called, is it Java Moose? Java Moose. Java Moose. Very cute and picturesque on Main Street Fair Play. In Fair Play, which is also, this area is known as South Park, like the TV show. I didn't actually realize that. Yeah. Is it, is that, so that's why that's here. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. This is Park County, so it's South Park County. Oh, okay. Yeah. That totally explains why that's here. Uh, and if you're interested, we uh, visited another Colorado landmark that pertains to South Park as well in something that we'll link up over there. <laughs> well, we just stopped in Fair Play, Colorado and picked up some energy for us and some energy for the car. There were two charge point stations there and it seemed to go flawlessly. Yeah, it was very simple. It doesn't have plug in charge, but literally just plug the thing in, tap the phone and it was good to go. So very quick and very simple. A lot easier than stopping at a gas station, really, if you think about it like that. Um, and charged fairly quickly. It was only a 62.5 kilowatt charger. Um, we were pulling at about 57, 58. It dropped to 56.5, of course, when I put the camera on it. But now we're on our way to Breckenridge. We may not stop in Breckenridge because it's a ski town and it's, a, it's ski season. So we'll see, but we're gonna go enjoy the drive. But it is super cool that we were able to stop in such a tiny, quaint little place that is basically the origin of the TV show South Park, uh, but that there were chargers there and the closest Tesla supercharger is actually in Breckenridge. We are going there, but we're not sure if we're going to stop there because it is a ski town, so it could be super busy. We'll see how, how it feels when we're driving through there. If it's too crazy to stop, we'll just continue on our adventure. So, so far we're about an hour and a half into our drive. Car has been very comfortable, um, very nice using all the features, but just the cabin feels very nice. We just hopped out and it was about 35 degrees, you know, got in and out of the car a couple of times and uh, got back in. It still feels pretty nice and cozy in here. So yeah. uh, I don't think we're using too much heat uh, to keep the cabin warm. It just feels nice and toasty on its own. Driven by a nice little food cart. That's neat. Um, going through a lot of little small towns now on our way to our next stop. But I think it's been fairly comfortable. What about you? I think it's been extremely comfortable. I haven't even thought about it. I really do enjoy the feeling of these seats and it would be interesting to see how they feel when they're not the vegan leather, but as it is, it feels super plush to me. And uh, it's it's a kind of comfort that I enjoy. I, I will say when you were taking a couple of those twisty mountain roads side to side, cause you do like driving those roads, um, you can definitely see the uh, or feel the lack of the side supports but it's, it's really not a big deal when we're doing driving like this, just cruising through the little towns. And speaking of driving through the twisty turns and uh, car has been handling great. It's not like we're, you know, pushing anywhere near the, uh, the max of the car. We're just going with traffic and enjoying the drive. It's very comfortable handles, uh, stays in the lane, you know, I mean, it just, it feels pretty good. Some people talk about because it's, of course, like an electronic steering system that uh, you don't get the feel of the road. Um, but what is very true of this car is like, it feels very precise. Uh, I'm in engaged mode, 
haven't felt the need to switch to unbridled or anything like that, but uh, it just stays, it seems very precise. So like, um, even if I take my hands off the wheel, it's like, it's going exactly which direction I pointed in and feels uh, well, well tuned in the steering department. Breckenridge now. It already looks pretty busy. We saw the ski shuttles heading off up the mountain and there's some people walking around. Love this place. Cover your face. That's a good sign. I like that. Lots of people on the streets already. It's a very, very quaint little place. Patrick actually did a Spartan Beast race up here. What time of year was it? June. It was June, but there was still snow. Still snow. <laughs> like sliding down the mountain on snow. Wow, wow there are lots of people. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll skip this. Yeah, but it's nice to look at. Frisco, Charge Point, Electrify America. So there's actually multiple chargers here. We're gonna go ahead and navigate to this one. Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. Continue three miles on Colorado 9. So now we're coming into the town of Frisco. This is right next to I-70 and there's multiple charging stations here, uh, but we're choosing an EA station. And once we're done in Frisco, we're gonna hop on I-70 West and head toward Glenwood Canyon. And it'll be a lot more freeway driving, but still very, very pretty. cheap by comparison. So this will actually adjust the price once I get my payment with, because I am using the EA app and signed up for the EA uh, charge plus or payment plus or whatever it is. So it's $4 a month and then it gives us the discounted rate. But I went ahead and did that because last week we had problems with plug and charge. So we're just going to test out and see if EA can work without plug and charge just using the the regular uh, authorization process. So now we're getting the 31 cents and hit continue. This is a 350 kilowatt charger. And let's see what happens. There we go, now it's ramping up. So for whatever reason, we're hitting at about 100 as our peak charging. It is a 350 kilowatt station and it's uh, fluctuating. And I'm not sure if that's because of the, the temperature or whatnot, but uh, we really don't need much of a charge, but we're gonna go ahead and just sit here for a little bit and let it uh, get up to, I'm not sure. What should we let it get up to? I'll, I'll think about that. 60. <laughs> issues with the EA charger last time, but so far so good. We're in 10 minutes into the charge at 13 kilowatt hours. Hello. So it's charging and we're just going to sit here and let it charge for a bit. We're getting about 85 kilowatts going into the car. I would expect it to be a little bit higher, but it's not horrible and we're not in a huge hurry and we're at a good rate of charge. 
the seat adjusted for you. <laughs> so I'm like, why am I sitting so high? But it, uh, it adjusted for you because you were in the car and not me. So that's neat. Um, I had to unlock the car manually with the Ford app. Press and hold the unlock button because it wouldn't let me in the passenger side. Yeah. So that must have happened. I think it gets confused if you stay around the car too much with both keys. And it's like, I'm going to go ahead and lock. And then it gets confused. But um, so far, this session is going like way better than we did last week. Let's turn the car on and see how the charging is. Fast charging. We're at 69%, 173 miles of range. So we've already added about 16 percentage points and over 60 miles of range, I believe, or around 60 miles. I'm going to get back to my spot. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so hard to that. capture, but it adjusted for him. Yeah. It, it, Liv was in the car by herself, so then it adjusted to her seating position. And then I just hit my preset and it's back to me. Let's see what profile is it on. Sorry. Yeah, it's back to my profile now, too. So perfect. I wish and I hope that they will add so that I can watch how many kilowatt hours. Um, this is one of the stations where it's very hard to monitor from inside the car exactly what kilowatts are going in. I'd have to get out and look, but I can see, you know, we're at 72 percent and 183 miles. Glenwood Springs, Colorado. All right. I'm setting your destination to Glenwood Springs. So it's a hour and 23 minutes, 88 miles, and we should arrive at about 109. We're at 78%. I'm getting ready to hop out and unplug. I'll go ahead and let it hit 80, and then we'll do the unplug. We're Already at 201 miles of range, which is far more than what we need. But we're just going to keep trying these EA, uh, EA uh, charging sessions so that we can prove that it will work with no issues as long as you don't use plug and charge right now. So we're going to give it a try and hit the road in a couple of minutes. I think we need to find something to eat first. So let's help us out. That crow. I know. I see the crow. For lunch. It's 79% doing 67 kilowatts. Once we'll watch what it happens when it hits 80. So there's 80 and now it's dropping down and I think it'll drop to about 11 or 12 kilowatts. So yeah, 11 and 12. We don't want to wait. That's too slow for us to wait. So we're going to go ahead and hit stop and end the session. So we added 28 kilowatt hours. It took uh, about 22 minutes. Cost us $9.23. And now we're ready to go. Uh, so Patrick just uh, pressed the Google button and uh, mentioned a restaurant name and it added it as a stop seamlessly. We are currently navigating to a charger that is an hour and 40 minutes away. And he had a restaurant idea and just seamlessly popped it into our route, which is really cool. I wasn't expecting that to be that easy, you? No, not at all. Hello. So that was a really good lunch up here. Where are we? Frisco. In Frisco. <laughs> well, that was a really good lunch up here in Frisco. It feels like we've been here for a while. We finished charging, we grabbed some food, and now we are on our way to Glenwood Springs through Glenwood Canyon. Let's go. So we're climbing again. If we look at this trip, <clears throat> since we left Frisco, we're climbing, got a lot of uh, winds, fightness, and we're at 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Very, very low. But to be expected, we're only uh, just under eight miles out of Frisco and been climbing the whole time. For the day, we're now at 122 miles. We're doing 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Again, that's low, but uh, lots of wind, lots of climbing. We're still, uh, I think we're probably getting back up to uh, nine or 10,000 feet. 
<clears throat> I expect that to you know, fluctuate a lot during the day. And as we get further along, I'll go ahead and switch back to intelligent cruise control. And basically all I'm doing is going to add lane, lane keep system on. And now it recognizes the lanes and it's keeping me centered in the lanes. Got my hand on the steering wheel, but it's handling the steering. And of course, acceleration is going to slow me down because it sees a truck now. So I'll just pop into the next lane. And as soon as it figures out where the lane is at, it'll come back on. Pointed that out in the other videos, but I still think it's just really cool and very smooth. And you can see like the road is, is curving quite a bit, not as much as it was before. And the lane keep assist is handling, handling it you know, perfectly. So now we're on I-70 West. We're headed toward Glenwood Canyon and Glenwood Springs. We're going to go through some other ski resort areas. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it is very windy. It's very windy. That's not normally the road noise. Yeah, I, I checked when we stopped to get some food and it was 17, 18 mile per hour winds with 25 mile per hour gusts. Seemed like it was even gustier than that. Um, and the car is like you can, you can feel the wind is being blown in all different directions as we're going through these canyons. Right now it says we are at 76% battery, 196 miles of range, it just dropped down, and we have 81 miles to Glenwood Springs. The views are absolutely unbeatable right now. I do wish that there had been a squeegee of some sort or something at that charging station so we could have a clean windshield for you guys. So now we've reached Glenwood Canyon. This is a very, very interesting stretch of Interstate 70. It's one of the last stretches of Interstate 70 that was completed because it was so difficult to build this road. Um, we're making great time. A lot of the speed limit back there was 75 miles an hour. We're actually at 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour at 187 miles for the day. So also doing uh, pretty efficient considering the speeds. It's still very windy and of course now through the canyon we're going to have some winds coming from different directions but if you ever get to drive this stretch of road I would highly recommend it it's very beautiful going through here um, and as you can see through the time lapse that we're going to uh, record there are some uh, interesting ways that they got this this road built the freeway had to, has to split a couple of different spots uh, to fit in Enjoy Glenwood Canyon. This is one of my favorite pieces of interstate in the entire U.S. We're here in Glenwood Springs. Patrick pulled the Maki in in front of a really beautiful mural uh, sponsored by the Bank of Colorado. And we actually came here for a very specific reason. We are going to be picking up donuts for a friend. She is currently in Carbondale. She's actually from New York and works part time as an accountant out in this area. And then when the pandemic hit, she was sort of stuck here permanently for like the past year, year, yeah, year and a year, half. Yeah. yeah. So it's tax season for her now we're gonna pick up some donuts her favorite and take them over to her in carbondale they close however in about 20 minutes so we're gonna hurry yeah let's go <laughs> let's go <laughs> once again we were in the car at noon and we forgot to look up i didn't notice anything as patrick just mentioned the sun is still pretty much dead straight ahead. I just looked right at the sun, <laughs> but I don't notice anything. Do you notice it? Yeah, you don't, it's not from there. quite tinted, so it's not that uh, noticeable. It is nice as we were going through the, the canyons and stuff like that. You could look up and see, 
um, but you don't notice like a bunch of heat coming through. It's actually 70 degrees now, if you can believe it. Um, it's the first day of spring, so I guess 70 Yay. should be about what it is. But anyways, it's a warm day considering how much snow we've been driving through in the mountains, but uh, car feels good. It's actually warming up a little bit. Turned on the AC, but it's not because of that. It's just warm today. Yeah, and you can sort of see just by the glare on my arm what uh, a completely untinted window versus heavily tinted is like. Because I think you can see that at no point is there any brightness on my arm or my skin, and the sun is sort of <laughs> in the in the forward direction of where I'm pointing there. But here we have untinted tanning arm right there. <laughs> So it's, it's fine. So that was actually a quick hop to Carbondale. We're only 10 miles south of Glenwood Springs. Um, we don't really need to charge. Let me go over here. Let's hit charge. We're at 50% and we're heading back to uh, towards Denver after this. And there'll be charging stations that we can stop at. But... Um, we just want to keep trying charging station. This is a charge point charging station. So we're going to give this a try. We had good luck earlier with one and we'll give this one a try and see how it goes. So it's just started charging. We're at 51%. We're actually going to go visit a friend. It says we have two hours. So we're going to go pop over there. We're only going to be a few minutes, just around the corner. And then we'll come back and check in on this again. Oh, but first they're going away. <laughs> Hi. So our friend just left and <laughs> now it's time to unplug. One of the cool things was, is while we were hanging out with our friend. The car was updating me, let me know when it hit 80%. So we're at, we reached 86% battery, it cost $4.74. Added 109 miles. And you can see it was actually 34 kilowatt hours that it added. So I'm gonna, last time I stopped it here and the car did not like that. So this time I'm gonna stop it on the car and see how that looks. So I just hit the button that's on the car and now it says it's not charging. So I can go ahead and unplug. Price set by the town of Carbondale. Very nice. So let's get going. We're gonna head back to Denver now and get on I-70. Uh, we have to get back up to Glenwood Springs, but we're gonna head back home. Okay, so we're heading back to Denver. Right now, we're at 212.9 miles. We're gonna probably go a shorter route to get home. We're at 3.3 miles per kilowatt hours, and we're gonna head back. It's still nice outside, 68 degrees. Well, that was a really great visit with our friends. So glad we got to drop off some donuts, and we are now leaving Carbondale. We are on our way back home. We're gonna take sort of a meandering route, but different to what we did to get here. We are uh, currently at 236 miles of range and 86% charge. We have quite a quite a way to go, 213 miles. Uh, 174 miles to home unless we take a detour. So we may be able to make it back, uh, but uh, may stop and charge again just to see how the other charging sessions go. So far, we've done pretty well today. Oh my gosh. And this charging session that we just had seemed really affordable. We're actually, uh, we're 213 miles into our driving for today, four and a half hours and 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So after all that climbing, it sort of evened itself out to quite a, quite a nice range. Yeah. That's a, if you, if you multiply that by 88, I can't do it in my head right now, but, uh, that gives you over the 270 mile, uh, estimated range for the car. So that's pretty darn good. Yeah. So I'm just sitting here as a passenger. <laughs> well, it's like I'm at a Lamaze class because he's just like breathing deeply as the intelligent <laughs> cruise control is braking in ways that he's not comfortable with. It just, <laughs> it was unnerving. We went from uh, 
65 miles per hour, almost all the way down to zero, uh, the light turned green. So we ended up, you know, starting back up at like three miles an hour, but we went from 65 to three miles per hour with it handling the braking and the lane centering completely. And I wouldn't have known that anything was going on if he hadn't started breathing weirdly. And then I look over and see the blue bubble with the little steering icon, which I'll show you guys. So that's pretty cool, but more terrifying when I realized why he was breathing weirdly. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so while charging does bring up a whole bunch of different things that you have to plan for, it's kind of nice in the case that we just used it for, stopping to see a friend, in that Patrick just pulled up to the charger on the street and it was right by where she was. And, and I'm sure this is not a situation that can happen all that often, but I think that as electric vehicles and charging and all of this becomes more prevalent, more common, that we'll have situations like that where you're gonna go meet a friend for coffee for 30 minutes, you pull up on the street, you plug in your charging, you never worry about going to a gas station, you never worry about anything like that. You just come back to get your vehicle and, and it's good to go. I, I think that'd be... Yeah. Amazing. The more, like, you don't need fast charging if you have a lot of, uh, and that was actually pretty fast charging. It was a 50 kilowatt 50 charger. kilowatt. Yeah. So it was pretty decent, but you don't need, like, the super fast charging if you're going to be using it in cases like that. So it worked out perfectly. It was relatively cheap, and it was notifying me as it was charging, like, when it hit 80%. So it was really cool. Yeah. And extremely unexpected, to be totally honest, that it would be in such a tiny little town. And sure, it was on the side of, I believe it was the main street, but it's a really small town. So that's cool. That's an amazing thing to have, amazing service to have. And it looked like it was uh, basically sponsored by the town of Carbondale, I believe. Yes. So that is an excellent investment by, by small towns. Like if we were coming through driving driving through Colorado, I'd, I'd say we could make that a destination knowing that it has charging. Yeah. These houses are so cute. And here we're coming up on No Name, Colorado. That was all. So we generally use Android Auto, we use Android phones, but if you have an Apple iPhone, I actually have one from work that I don't use for anything but work, but it's nice to be able to connect it to the car. Let's see if we can switch over to it. Um, I don't have a lot of stuff configured on this iPhone because I use it strictly for work, but I do have maps, of course. And amazingly enough, it figured out that I was traveling to home. Maybe the car told it, or maybe, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, it connected and this is Apple CarPlay. Looked pretty much the same as, you know, the same area as where Android Auto worked. If you have other apps, you can access those other apps. Uh, kind of keeps like a little map here, which I think is almost useless because it's so small, but I do kind of like the apps on the left there because they're accessible for the driver. Yeah, it, it's actually a pretty good layout. And there's yeah. the speed trap. <laughs> so there's just different settings. Like I said, I don't really have anything set up for for my iPhone, but it just goes to show like the interface is available just as it were, like if I were using Android Auto. So pretty cool and pretty neat that I can switch back and forth between the two. So you can see that Apple CarPlay is doing the navigation. One of the difference between Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is that the driving directions, like my next turn, isn't showing up on the driver console when I use Apple CarPlay. So that is the one of the things that's missing from Apple CarPlay. I don't know if they'll be able to add that or if there's a restriction for via using Apple. But uh, that is a difference to note. Hello, as you can see, the sun is glaring right at you from over there, 
I don't notice it very much, but I definitely see it in the camera. So that's kind of an interesting view. We just did sort of an emergency stop uh, because of food and bathrooms, because all of a sudden what was a green traffic route turned into, you know, that dark red black on the traffic and on Google, Google Maps. So that's the ski traffic. We don't know how long it's going to take us to get home. It did say two and a half hours initially, and then suddenly it said three hours. And we haven't looked again because we're too scared. So now we are, where are we? We're climbing up to what's uh, the Eisenhower Tunnel and the Continental Divide. Uh, my ears are popping again as we're climbing a lot of altitude right now. And Eisenhower Tunnel is sort of notable. I'll put a link to the, uh, just the information about that. It's a huge effort to get this built. And of course, uh, was a big part of getting I-70 built. One of the cool things is right now I have cruise control on. Um, it's set to 53, but it is <laughs> figuring out that we are in a lot of traffic and it's basically keeping my distance from the car in front of me and making this a lot easier to deal with. So who's accelerating? The car? Yeah, the car's accelerating. That's awesome. And now it's going to slow us back down. So we go through the tunnel. Ow. The left one is the Eisenhower Tunnel. The right one is the Johnson Tunnel. Oh. But everybody just calls it the Eisenhower Tunnel because that was the first one. <laughs> That was the first one, and then they dug this one as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, from the road, hopefully. I don't know. I've never Speak done loud. this before. What's that? Speak loud, because it's a lot of road noise. I'm speaking loudly. So hopefully I set this up right. <laughs> We're gonna stop at the EA charging station that we stopped at two weeks ago. If you watched the Denver video that we just put up a few days ago, we had a lot of trouble at this EA station. So we're gonna try it again and see how it goes. We're, we're getting closer into the city. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> we're doing like 70 miles an hour and somebody literally stuck their head out the window. That Look was, at the car. That was really cute. I wish you could have, I wish you could have gotten it. So this is the same station. We're gonna open up. We're gonna take this one that we used last time. I'm trying to do it one-handed. Liv is doing the YouTube live right now. Um, so I am going to try and, there we go. Plugged in, it's ready to go. And I'm gonna have to see if I can uh, pay somehow. I'll do it with my credit card for this one just because we don't wanna use either of our phones. We didn't think this through. So it'll be expensive just because we're not using the phone. Oh, it says use chip reader. Fine. So it's processing payment. And let's see how this goes. Authorized, initiating charge. It sounds like it's ready to give me some juice. There we go. 163, 39%. And like you've seen before, that should be nice, uh, nice and strong for the next minute or two. One sixty. Do we have one sixty one? Can anyone do an auctioneer voice? Now it's scaling back. It's one fifty three. Oh. One fifty one. We should make bets beforehand. 146. I'm cold. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. <laughs> we may not go to 80% because we're freezing. So we are at 13 minutes. Last week it aired out 
at 10 minutes and two minutes and I think seven minutes. Let's hit return. We're still getting a good uh, rate going into the car. It's at 90, 99 kilowatts, so that's great. Uh, we're at 14 minutes. I think I'll let it go just a few more minutes before we stop and call this a success. I don't know what those explosions were. Sounded like gunshots. We're at a good part of town, I promise. So let's go over here and see what Liv is doing. She's still doing a YouTube live for the channel. So if you haven't checked it out, go back and watch the YouTube live. We'll leave that up. It'll take us a while to edit this. Hi. Hey, I don't know what that noise is. That doesn't sound good. So this now is... you guys are in the video twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. It's like so we're at 13 twice. minutes. So I think okay. two more minutes and then we hop back in the I car. Mean, we are at 77%, still at 83 kilowatts, and we've been here 21 minutes. This is awesome. This is a great charging session. So we we went ahead and finished up 38 kilowatt hours, 21 minutes. Um, that was just really cool. Let's see, get receipt. Well, we just had a very successful charging session at that Nemesis, the EA station that uh, was unsuccessful the past two times. Well, we had three failures there. Yeah. Uh, in our other video, the Denver video, of course, that'll be linked above, but um, successful charging station. We stopped it because it's cold and we didn't think to put on a jacket, but <laughs> I stopped it at 78. Like we're way, 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 way more range than we need. We're 20 miles from home and I got 200 miles of range or 197 miles of range, 77% uh, battery. And uh, we're at 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour and we drove 371 miles today. That's very good, well done. Uh, and we'll show you the screen, but we have 3% went to climate utes, 92% went to route, 3% accessories, 3% external temperature. I have to be honest, it's kind of, uh, I'm surprised that the climate use is so low because we were both hot and cold. <laughs> so at some points we were cold and we had the heated seats on. And then at other points it was 70 degrees, like it was 70 degrees in Carbondale. And then we got back in and turned the fans up high and set the temperature to 68. So the car has been uh, adjusting from situation normal and 3% uh, doesn't seem bad to me. You? Mm -hmm. Now it's really dark. Yeah. So we're going to go. <laughs> that was a fun, fun day in the Colorado mountains. I had a blast. The car was great. Um, hopefully we get to do a lot more of those. Um, yeah, it was super fun. It was fun getting to just sightsee and the mountains are, are beautiful. And aside from the traffic, they're quite tranquil. Uh, but we had a great time and the only thing was that the car got a little dirty. So we're finishing our night out by giving a little spritz, a little bath, a little clean. We're not taking it through a car wash, so don't you worry. We're going to hand wash this baby. Yeah, we're just really just going to spray it off just to make sure we get some of the salt type grime off of the car. Yeah. But that's about it. If you want to see more of these, let us know in the comments and of course subscribe hit the bell notification. And if you were in the live video that we filmed while we were filming this, then you, they should do an icon down below, a green star. Or something. So let us know, because that was really fun. Thank you for joining us for that. So anyways, thanks for joining us on this adventure and hopefully you will join us on our next adventure. That's all we got for now. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. That's so normal though. It's okay. We're normal.